Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby, I'm with Fitness is Medicine. And today I'm gonna give you a workout, um, again, that you can do in your home. This one, uh, there's a few higher intensity ones here, so if you have trouble with these, you can always do um, some lighter versions of things that you already know, um, maybe just some squats or things, but I'll show you and give you some alternatives as we go. So I'm gonna use one dumbbell today, maybe a little bit heavier. We're gonna do a one arm row and I'll show you how to do that. And then a couple different balls if you have them. So I've got a lightweight medicine ball here. Um, and then I have just a playground ball. And then I have a little bit heavier medicine ball. If you don't have any of those, just grab like a small dumbbell, maybe a two pound or a five pound. And we're gonna use a few different um, balls like that. So the last thing, if you have any furniture sliders so, or even just a towel on um, a hardwood floor, but I'm gonna do a lunge with a slider. So this is just a plain old furniture slider and it works great. Or like I said, if you're on a hardwood floor or a tile floor and you use a towel, that will work just fine too. Okay, so remember to come into these workouts warmed up and ready to go. And we're gonna start with a one arm row on the bench. So I've got my bench here. If you don't have a bench, you can use the side of a bed. You can use the side of a, a you know, the edge of a coffee table. Importantly, I want you to be able to put one knee and one arm here. So you've got a nice flat surface here, a nice flat back. We're gonna use one dumbbell and do a row. So starting with the dumbbell here, it's going to be a little bit lower than the surface of the table, but I want your back flat. I don't want you reaching way down here. Your back should stay even and like you're balancing a teacup. So we're gonna drive your elbow towards the ceiling keeping that shoulder down away from your ear. And the bench is supporting your hand and your knee here, so this shouldn't bother your back at all. We're just really isolating one side at a time here, working on those um, rhomboids and rear delts and your biceps are getting some work here. Think about squeezing your shoulder blade toward your spine as you pull that weight towards the ceiling. You're just pulling it straight towards your armpit. Okay, then we're gonna switch sides. So you, are, you don't have to put this weight down on the floor at all. You can just leave it right on the edge of the bed or the coffee table or bench or whatever you're using. Now we're just gonna switch sides, nice and slowly, both directions. You wanna control that weight on the way down. You don't wanna let gravity take over. Driving your elbow up towards the ceiling, shoulder away from your ear, and keep breathing. As always, in a lot of these exercises, I want you to keep your abs nice and tight. That just gives you the support that you need to support your spine. All right, good, now rest. Now you can leave that weight right here. Um, this is a heavier weight than I want you using, like I said, instead of a dumbbell or something. Now I'm gonna use this furniture slider I'm gonna put it under my toe. So if you have a bigger one, it works better. I just have this little one right here. And we're going to do reverse lunges. So I'm gonna raise this camera up just a little. Now, this might work best if you're doing this maybe at a kitchen counter or um, you know somewhere where you've got a little bit of balance to hang on. So you're just gonna put this under your toe, slide it backwards into a lunge and come right back up. So you're pulling, you're pushing it back and then pulling it forward, leaving your foot on the floor the whole time. So you kind of want to go back pretty far, just like you're going to kind of reach back and kneel down. We're going to do 10 on this side, six. Pulling that back up can be challenging on your balance. So having something to hang on to, even if you just have a chair next to you, trying to keep your torso up nice and tall, you're just kind of sitting down in between those feet. We'll do one more. And the other thing is, if you need a little more challenge, you can always grab a weight. So I always like to do it with one weight for a variety of reasons. First, if you have one weight, like say I was using the weight in this hand. Oops, I would use it in my other hand because then I have more room for it. Um, first of all, you've got this hand to hang on to something. Second of all, whoops, it requires more balance. So you have to balance with your core um, when you have a weight just in one hand. 
and you are having to balance that way between you know your feet and your legs everything is called into more balance when you just have weight in one side we're going to do three more if this is the first time doing these though i would not recommend using um, an added weight really sitting back squeezing those glutes as you come up all right good reverse lunges if you don't have a slider you can always just step back too or if you don't have a you know a hardwood floor with a towel or um, things like that. So you can always just step back as well. Okay, now we're going to lower down to the floor and do some crab reaches. So we're going to be on your hands and feet this way. So, you know, remember in PE when we were kids and we do like the crab walk across the gym and things like that. Now, if you have trouble with your wrists, um, you can this one's going to be a little bit difficult, but I don't worry about that too much as long as you don't have pain later. I think it's important to keep the flexibility and the strength going in your wrists if it's something that you're challenged with. Like when we do push-ups, it can be challenging. That's the most common thing I hear about it is that it hurts people's wrists. But we need to maintain that flexibility and that strength. So challenging it sometimes I don't see anything wrong with it, as long as you don't have pain later. Like if you have a lot of pain after doing um, exercises on your hands, then we need to address it and get some modalities to help um, assist. So we're gonna be in a crab like this. And what I'm gonna have you do first is lift one foot up and then the other foot up. Now, if you can do that, then I want you to lift one hand and then the other hand. So you're going to shift over a little bit, and that's okay. Now, if you have trouble with either of those, stick with that. Just do your feet or just do your hands. If you want to continue on with the challenge, I'm going to have you do one of the other, so both. So you're going to be doing opposite reaches toward so my right leg and my left leg, my right arm and my left leg are going up and then my left arm and my right leg. So the goal is to do this in a controlled fashion. If you're finding that you're here and you have to really flip back, I don't want you to add your hands. So maybe just start with little marches here. And that is plenty, that's still a lot. If you can, and you can do it controlled and safely, you can try this one. We'll do one more on each side. Okay, great. Now, we're gonna grab a light ball. I'm just gonna use, this one is two pounds, or you can use just a playground ball. And we're going to do an abdominal exercise here. I've got a few different medicine balls here. I'm going to show you with just the playground ball because a lot of people don't have medicine balls sitting around their house, but you might have a ball, you know, beach ball, anything like that, or just a really small weight, maybe a two pound dumbbell. We're going to do diagonal abs. So think about like if I were to take my legs and my arms out this way, so my, I'm going to reach diagonally. So you can start with nothing, no weight, no medicine ball. And if that feels like a good challenge, you can stay with that. If you want to add a little weight or just a ball so you have something to hang on to, you can grab. Now, importantly, like I say many times, we want to flatten your back to the ground here. So we're doing a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, engaging that core and protecting your back. So start small. So don't reach all the way. We're gonna start small, keeping your knees bent and your elbows bent. So we're engaging that core, getting a little bit more of your obliques, getting these diagonal mo motions going. Now, if you're feeling okay, your back's not hurting, you're able to maintain that flat back then you can try to stretch it out a little more. 
But as soon as you stretch it out, if you have back pain, or if you really have such a hard time maintaining that, and that's gonna be really hard to maintain that flat back, then keep it in a little bit tighter. So maybe just a little reach, keeping those knees bent. Really, sometimes you can just kind of rock your knees back and forth and do the motion with your arms. And that's gonna be easier to keep that back flat on the ground. But you can, you can experiment and reach out a little bit further, see how it goes. If it doesn't work, just come back to where you were. Okay, so do about 10 on each side. And remember to really try to maintain that posterior pelvic tilt, keeping your back flat to the ground. Okay, now we're gonna use that medicine ball again, or just dumbbell or whatever you have. And we're going to do a twist. Oops, I gotta erase my camera up. Standing. So you're in not really a squat, but a good athletic stance, knees bent, hips back just a little bit, core engaged. We're gonna take this ball and turn and slowly push it out to the side. So sometimes we do chops where it's fast. You may find you want a little bit more weight for this, or you may find you want less. It depends on your back. So this is going to challenge your core again. So it's a similar motion to what we just did. We're kind of building on it. But when you reach that weight out away from you, your back has to engage. And that's okay, I want to engage your back, but I don't wanna make it painful. So if you have back pain with this, one thing you can do is we could sit and stretch out. So we're still, we're still trying to increase that strength in your back without causing pain. So there's a fine line. Reaching weight out away from your body somewhere has to take that. And we want to strengthen your back when your core needs to stay engaged here to protect your back. But if it's hurting, like I said, you can do a smaller range of motion. You can keep those elbows a little bit more bent when you reach out. You don't have to go as far. If you really want to challenge, you can increase your weight. And this is a really great core exercise. In addition to your shoulders, depending on how much weight that you end up choosing here. Nice and slowly is the key. So we're gonna be getting your biceps here again, your shoulders, your obliques, and your back. Your back is taking some of this, and that's okay as long as you don't have back pain. If you do, you can keep it in nice and, nice and tight here, just a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go one more each direction here. All right, and then remember, when you set those down, bend your knees and protect that back. Okay, we're gonna do one more, a little bit of balance, ankle range of motion. I'm gonna move my bench out of the way here. So I'm gonna have you just do a heel walk. So this is gonna challenge that ankle range of motion and your balance. Working on that the strength here of your anterior tibialis, the front of your shins. And when you do this, Try to stay nice and tall. Try not to have to lean over like this. If you really have to hinge like this, then um, there's other things you can do to work on your ankle range of motion. Just nice and slowly, you can kind of go back and forth across your room a few times. And this will challenge your balance a little bit too. Only walking on your heels. Okay, now we're gonna switch and walk on your toes. So up as high as you can on those toes, kind of working those muscles in your toes, the balance, your calves, your gastrox. Having strong feet and legs all the way up is really important for fall prevention and balance and fall prevention. So really thinking about those toes splaying, grabbing the ground as you go, trying to be as high as you can up 
on those toes, maintaining good tall posture. This is easier on your toes than here. But you can kind of go back and forth and just see how it feels. If you have a lot of difficulty with this, um, it would be good to start working on some just plain calf raises. And the other thing that would be good is to start to do some ankle range of motion. If you're sitting on the sofa at night, watching TV, do some circles, get that ankle range of motion, gets that muscle pump going to pump some fluid back up out of your feet. Um, that's if you're having struggles with those. Those are good things to do anyway to maintain range of motion. But particularly if you're having trouble with those two things, that ankle dorsiflexion, so that when you're pulling your ankles up, losing that range of motion in your feet and ankles is, um, is problematic for balance and falls. So that's a really good thing for you to work on. Okay, so go ahead and stop. You can press pause, go through do some cardio, go through these a couple more times and really challenge yourself. And remember to always think with those, those, those two, especially that we did with your back, really think about can keeping your core engaged and protecting your back. If you have any back pain, do the modifications that I talked about. All right, thank you everybody. I hope you're having a great week. I'll see you on Friday.